get up out your seats. Coming to the ring. Yeah, but I'm wondering if you can bring in with one win. No losses. Undefeated in the streets. Weighing in over 300 pounds. I hate the Bring it in the round bell is ringing in the ring then I'll be singing but I hear they get the crowd out but I'm wondering if you can bring it when the round bell is ringing in the ring then I'll be singing I'm here to get the crowd out but I'm wondering if you can bring it when the round bell is ringing in the ring then I'll be singing but I hear they get the crowd out but I'm wondering if you can bring it Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Central Time, if you live in the great state of Texas, and here on the very wet coast of California, it is 6 p.m. Pacific Time, and you are listening to IHWE Professional Wrestling Radio. I'm your host, Michael McCurdy, the author of the upcoming encyclopedia WCCW, as well as co-promoter of the new IHWE California, which will be returning February 7th here in Eureka, California, at Redwood Acres Fairgrounds. We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight. And joining me, as always, I'm hoping he hasn't gotten out the lifeboat to have to evacuate yet, but nestled inside Camp Souza in the Nisco's location behind the Redwood Curtain, my co-host, Joe Souza. Joe, how are we doing tonight? Ah, we're doing good. Uh, a little bit of a rough uh, hour or two here at the Wolftown Dinner, and we found two uh, very stray newborn kittens uh, behind the house, so we took them uh, to this place where uh, they uh, took care of them, washed them up, that type of deal. So that and running around and uh, and uh, wrestling-wise, bit of a somber day for me and uh, the wrestling world. I found out this morning that we lost Don Manukian and uh Don Manukian uh played for the Oakland Raiders. I I'm going to assume you didn't know that. Uh, he played for the Raiders back in the early 60s. And he was also a world tag team champion with Ray Stevens in San Francisco. Uh up in Portland, big time baby face, big time good guy, but in San Francisco, oh, he was just evil as sin. Loved him though. And I kind of thought about how I was going to pay a little tribute to him. And uh, amongst my Cow Pals collection, as you know, I have video. And I also have audio from the Channel 2 tapings from the mid-'60s. And one features an interview conducted by Walt Harris with Don Manukian and Pat Patterson. And they're carrying on saying how they're going to beat their <coughs> opponents. And they co- they took a little bit too much time. And, you know, Walt Harris, you know, said, hey, why don't you guys just go take a shower? And the crowd applauded because they can't stand Pat Patterson and Don Manukian at the time. Well, Manukian, in his raspy voice, kind of goes along the lines of, Listen, when I'm ready to leave this TV stand, I'll leave. And if you don't let me have the TV time, I'll buy the time. And if you don't let me buy the time, I'll buy the station. What do you think about that? And, of course, the crowd started booing big time, and Patterson goes, Hey, what do you think about that, fans? And big old smile on my face because uh, I can go on for hours and days about, you know, that promo. But anyway, uh, you know, we lost a legend. Very good guy. Uh, lived in the Reno, Nevada area. Uh, very, very uh, big in the community. And uh, rest in peace, Don Manukian. Thoughts and prayers go out to the Manukian family, Mike. Yes, uh, Joe speaks for all of us here at IHWE Radio. Um, I can't say I know much about Don Manukian wrestling-wise. I believe I met him at one of the reunions. I would have to go through the photo album because I've met so many people. Some of the names I don't remember, so jog the memory. But, Joe, you can't assume anything because I actually did know that Don Manukian was an Oakland Raider. I knew that. Okay. I don't Very know about wrestling career, but I knew he was a Raider. Very good. Very good. Anyway, Joe, I was saying... Yeah. 
Well, I was going to say, of course you have to know. You're, you're, you're a big member of the Raider Nation. I'm a proud member. Well, I'm change that. I'm not a proud member of the Raider Nation right now because right now we suck. Um, 0 and 3. But we're not talking football. This is ICWE Professional Wrestling Radio. We're not going to talk football unless we have Wahoo McDaniel or Vader or somebody like that that we're talking about. Then we might talk about football because obviously, see, I know these things. I pride myself on my intelligence. I don't have a lot. Anyways, uh, as I was saying at the top of the show, uh, you and I, we made our deal. We signed the contracts per se. And February 7th, it is a done deal. We are returning to the Redwood Acres Fairgrounds on February 7th. I'm assuming we will have the same actual door and bell time. We'll have all that information as time goes on. But we are returning, and people are already talking about it. In fact, I think we have about half a card lined up so far. Well, we actually have officially a match signed, and it started with Facebook last week. Uh, back to school night with my son Mike. He's a senior, and when we made the announcement that you know we're going to do it again at Redwood Acres, uh, a few of the guys ran some good smack on Facebook and had to come to the rescue and said, guys, 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 instead of having a brawl on Facebook, bring the brawl to the ring. So being that said, in one corner you're going to have the diabolical evil, dare I say, suicide kings of Matt Farmer and Chris Del Sol, and they're going to have their hands full. They're going to take on the Illuminati, which is weighed by God Hess and his partner, Thunder, and that is just going to be a knockdown, drag out brawl. So, who are the good guys in that one, really? The, mean, Illuminati. the Illuminati. The Illuminati, okay, because anybody knows anything about uh, Pacific Northwest Wrestling currently, the Illuminati have never quite been on the side of good, they've never been the positive. Well, Wade Hess, as you know, he was he was here in Eureka on March 22nd, and he was uh, and he happened to win the inaugural Northern California title, which we'll talk more about that in the many weeks to come. And the fans took to him, and uh, he had to take on the evil Dr. Cleaver. And wherever Dr. Cleaver goes, controversy follows him. But it's going to be an exciting night. Uh, the Suicide Kings against the Illuminati. Uh, Rep's going to have his hands full. Yes, yes, he will. Tag matches are always that way, though. I mean, I, I, I had my experience in a tag match, and I had no idea what end was up, but I didn't have any idea what end was up that entire card. So I can't say that I am an experienced referee after four lucha matches at a fairgrounds, but I got a better idea of it. Yes, there definitely will be uh, – have to do a lot of work. Um, in fact, I was listening to you <clears throat> just to promote something else real quick. I was listening to last night the uh, World Domination with Terry Sims. Anybody has a chance to listen to that, that would be uh, on Tuesday nights um, on Blog Talk Radio, hosted by the former beauty. Well, maybe not the former beauty. He might still He's still a good-looking guy. But if anybody watched uh, World Class, USWA, y'all remember the beauty, Terrence Garvin, and he now hosts World Domination which is a great little podcast, and last night he had, uh, well, one, David Fuller was on, talked about this show coming up on the 28th. We have something coming up on the 28th, I think. Well, he's going to come on later on today. We'll talk about that. But they had James Beard on, and James Beard was talking about the role of the referee, and he made a comment that he was reading one time somewhere that somebody said that if the referee is doing his job, you don't know he's there. And James had a problem with that, because if the referee is doing his job, you know he's there because he is an integral part of that match. You can't have a match without a referee. He's the third man. So I thought that was kind of a a good observation, because people always forget the role of the referee. But it's not for a referee that ties it all together. Your, Your match is not, you can't have two guys in there, one versus one, without a ref. You can try it. I don't think it's going to work very well. Unless you're in a cage match where you just have to escape. The referee role is very important. Well, it's almost like in any other sport. You know, you have to have a referee. You have to have rules and regulations and that type of thing. And, you know, James Beard, one of the best in the business, as well as, you know, uh, Dick Worley, Dick Kroll. 
and uh, uh, Teddy Long. You know, a lot of people know him as, you know, Theodore Long, general manager on SmackDown, uh, you know, uh, years previous. But, yeah, I remember he refereed in the WCW. Very capable, I must say. Yes. And an amazing medical recovery that man is. Went from having a hurt back, I think it was, to being able to make a three count in a span of like two seconds. Great healing abilities. Kind of like Wolverine. Man game right WCW, there, boy. I'll tell you what. There you go. <laughs> Anybody who watches WCW is going to get that reference, and you're going to find out why Theodore R. Long became a manager. So, yeah. If you don't know about it, go back, take a look at the match. We'll bring on Brian Westcott. He's joining us here in just a moment. I'm sure he can fill in a little bit more of the details. But right now, I want to bring on a man that I enjoy speaking to. I love talking to you, Joe. Don't get me wrong. You know, you're my co-host, co-promoter. We're good. Love talking to you. But this guy right here just puts a smile on my face every time I hear his voice because, man, he is absolutely phenomenal. And we're bringing on. Austin, how are we doing tonight? Doing phenomenal because good is just not good enough. Seriously, I'm not kidding. How you doing, Joe? S O U S A. I love you know. I can't even tell you how much I love saying your last name. There's a there's a ring to it. For some reason, I just put a big old smile on my face. I am doing fine tonight. Well, like I said, you know, you you may have heard from the, from the beginning. You know, we lost uh, Dominic and you know, dear a uh, dear friend of mine and. Mm. Uh, and it was it was a bit of a somber day today, but uh, you know we'll we'll plug right through it and yeah. Very sorry for the loss there. Thank you, sir. You know now, Nothing yeah, it's it's like the, you know. Yes, Austin. How's it been going since last? No, was it two weeks ago? I don't know. I I mistaked your name, I believe. Um, it wasn't my um intentions, <laughs> or maybe it was my intentions. <laughs> if anybody listens to Austin's other show on Tuesday nights on Blog Talk Radio, Pipe Bomb Radio, a great show. I have actually become a fan. I listen to it every night, every week now. Um, I decided to call in because I wanted to talk with Felix and Austin for a moment. Austin thought I was Jagger Lane. Now, Jagger Lane, if anybody doesn't know, is with Hulk Hogan's, was with Hulk Hogan's Micro Championship Wrestling. Jagger Lane is a... What's the politically correct term? Well, the thing is, person. he's not a midget, though. That's the thing. He no. actually is the only one. He's a he's a kind of like a referee for um, a micro championship wrestling from time to time, traveling around the comic cons they go to, and uh, really doing well with that. But um, you know, he's one. He's he stands out there with Johnny Johnny G and the micro championship wrestling crew, full of um. I don't even really know if there's a politically correct term for for midgets, but you know, like you said, short people. You know, I don't know the Right way to say it. Well, let's anyway, think yeah. about this now. Yes. Oh, 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 and Joe goes for the really bad joke. I like that, though. But, yes, Austin thought I was Jagger Lane. And then for the next two minutes, Felix and I proceeded to – well, we, we kind of gave him some good-natured ribbing. And I don't think he'll ever mistake me for Jagger Lane again. I hope. Maybe. It depends what time I wake up in the morning. I'll, I won't call you first thing in the morning, man, because I'm a bear when I wake up, and I don't like dealing with people. So, mm-hmm. anyways, Austin, we just had uh, a couple days ago, everybody saw it, Night of Champions pay-per-view, Cena versus Lesnar, and a few other things. What was your opinion on the WWE pay-per-view this past Sunday? You know, people are expecting it to be kind of a, a not, nece- not necessarily a one-match show, but, you know, people are focused on Brock versus uh um, Brock versus Cena, but at the same time, Roman Reigns was sidelined. He was injured. He, I think he had a her- hernia, I believe, it, over the weekend. Incarcerated and, uh, hernia. Be, yes, for, and he's going to be out for a couple of months. They said several months. I don't know what, what, how they're going to you know, keep him out for that long. I doubt uh, hernia takes um, that long to recover. But nonetheless, Dean Ambrose made his return to Night of Champions after being gone for about a month, after being, you know, having his head put through cement blocks, which isn't, you know, a walk in the park. If I, you know, I, I have never had that done to me, but I mean, it probably hurts. I'm, I'm just guessing, but it looks like Dean Ambrose got hurt because he's out for a month, and he came back with a vengeance, David Fuller, right? 
And uh, he came out with a vengeance and attacked Seth Rollins and proceeded to try to put his head through cement blocks. Uh, and didn't do well with that part because Seth got away and um, basically took somebody's car. I don't know if he's getting charged for that. And uh, and ran away out of, the, out of the building before eventually returning and attacking De Ambrose again backstage. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this is leading to. But Brock versus John Cena... You've seen it happen again for the, I believe it's the first, the fourth time maybe in Night of Champions for the WWE Championship, and uh, there's always a plan B. Seth Rollins came down and and basically knocked out John Cena, causing disqualification, and uh, wanting to cash in on. I don't even know what's up with Seth Rollins' head and you know what's going on there, because if in my mind. If Brock Lesnar is the WWE champion, I am not going to cash in on Brock Lesnar. I'm just going to wait a couple more months and let somebody else take him out, which I don't think is possible. And uh, maybe he's just going to have to go without cashing in because I don't see anybody doing that to Brock Lesnar anytime soon. But um, overall, I thought it was a great pay-per-view. And um, a lot of I think it met people's expectations, maybe exceeded them a little bit more than what um, uh, they expected to see beforehand. I enjoyed the show. I thought it was uh, well done. Uh, Cena versus Lesnar was more to my liking this time because it actually wasn't a one-sided squash. Cena fought back. Brock Brock legitimately looked like he kind of got a little... He kind of got a little bit of work. I got hurt this time. It looked legitimate. It wasn't Brock Lesnar just dropping Cena like 16 times and Cena coming back the next week. But yeah, Dean Ambrose coming back, that definitely was a... uh, one of the high points of the pay review. I like the Dean Ambrose character, and I think a lot of the fans out there watching WWE are big behind Dean Ambrose. He's the man. Uh, to the point, it might come to the point where Dean Ambrose might be in that spot that they're trying to build up for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns has that look, but there's something about Dean Ambrose. It's the that intangible factor, the it factor, whatever they want to call it. He's got it. Yep. You know, and Some then we even saw it on Monday much- night. Mm. Ready for my opinion now? Yes, Joe. What's your opinion? Well, <clears throat> well, you know, well, you know how well quoting a dear friend of mine, you know, Stanford likes sports entertainment. I love wrestling. Once again, thank you for so much for that T-shirt, Mike. Uh, the Lesnar Cena match, it, it, it was good. It was uh, better than we expected. But uh, Mike, you might want to be uh, bracing yourself for this one. Uh, the one match I was very impressed with was the ladies' title match. Mm-hmm. Yes, I said that. There we go, Joe. S O U S A. Come on, S O U S A. Write it down, people. I was impressed with the divas' title match. Mike, are you with us? Are you awake? I'm right. Well, I wasn't awake during the divas' title match, but yeah, I I agree with you. Uh, no, Austin, I'm serious. I was a little bit tired that night, and I dozed off for a few minutes, and it was during the Divas title match. No offense to the Divas, though. I love AJ Lee and Paige. Not a huge fan of Nikki Bella, but Nikki Bella, I don't think, was a major part of that match. I think it was coming down to between AJ and Paige. Nikki was just there. The work rate was good. I, I really I really liked it, because normally there's not very many holds or maneuvers, but... Uh, for the trio, a wrestling match actually broke out. This actually got my attention. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, no bathroom break for this guy during that particular bout. You know, you guys can say whatever you want about uh, and talking about, and talking about in general. Say whatever you want about the Bella Twins, Bree and Nikki. I think they're actually doing way, I mean, much better than they did in, in years past. I don't know. I think um, I think John Cena and Daniel Bryan have a little bit into giving them a little, you know, bit of you know, tips to continue their wrestling career and really doing it well because I see a lot of differences between Bree and Nikki um, from, like I said, previous years. I don't know if you guys are seeing the same, but they're definitely impressing me. I don't know about you. Oh, they're, they're, they're definitely impressive. They've gone a long way since the uh, the days of twin magic and all that where one was in the ring and then they did that little switch because at one point, there was only one Bella, supposedly. I believe it was Bree. Was Bree the first one who showed up? Anybody hmm. know? Yes, no. I don't think so. I can't remember. I believe it was both I, in the I same think time. Was... Well, they both came in at the same time, but it was one person wrestling. 
And I believe it was just Brie Bella was the one who wrestled. And then she would switch places. No one knew there was a twin yet, supposedly. They didn't. They weren't both in the ring at the same time. It was one or the other, and only one person was named. Mm-hmm. It was called, uh, yeah. It was an early storyline. You know what? I'm just going to solve this problem. He's on the line. He can fill in the facts, I hope. Our resident <laughs> historian here on ISWE Radio, if I can get him on the air here, Brian Westcott. Brian, how are we doing tonight? I'm not doing really good. Uh, 30 years ago today, Greg the Hammer Valentine defeated Peter Santana for the World Wrestling Federation Intercontinental Championship in London, Ontario, Canada. And that was a big feud for uh, Valentine and Santana. Of course, Valentine had just come on board from Mid-Atlantic, and Peter Santana come from the AWA. And it was, it was a different great, great feud for both Santana and for Valentine, of course, Santana would regain the belt in a steel cage match in July of 85. So, yeah, it would have been right after uh, the very first WrestleMania. And, and yeah, I can still remember uh, watching the match on videotape. Valentine was just smashing the belt against the cage with the ring. He was so upset losing that. And, uh, yeah, I'm sad to hear about Don Manukian passing away. Big name, as uh, Joe Sousa mentioned earlier, also with a member of the Cauliflower Alley Club. Also, as I'm looking on Facebook right now, one of my uh, Facebook contacts has, get this, he's got this for sale. It is the uh, old uh, WCW Monday Nitro Grill menu, Las Vegas, where the big boys eat. I mean, talk about a literal blast in the past. I mean, we've got stuff like a clothesline quesadilla. we got jackknife fried cheese, garcade Caesar salad. Then we've, we've got a half Nelson and chicken chicken, superplex salmon filet. We've got Jimmy Hart's pasta. You knew that was coming. We've also got a uh, diamond a Dallas burger, a uh, heavyweight hot fudge sundae, cheesecake uncensored, Hogan Burger, Steve Burger, just all sorts of good stuff here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing out loud here. That was great. The, Wait the, a minute. Superplex salmon filet, really? That's on the menu? <laughs> this isn't yep. real. They don't have pasta and mania. Cheese, and cheesecake uncensored, wow. Hey, Where's the heavyweight mania? sundae, that's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, that sounds kind of good, actually. I can go with a little bit of a heavyweight Sunday right now. Um, anyways, I love bringing Brian onto the show here because we're having this very engaging conversation about Bree and Nikki Bella. I bring on Brian, and he goes straight 30 years ago with Tito Santana and Greg Valentine. Cause, and I'm sorry, that's far more important and a better match than I think Bree and Nikki Bella could ever put on. So, Well, speaking with Tito Santana, just my opinion, my opinion only, uh, Tito Santana – should have been a world champion, regardless if it yeah, was AWA or WWE. It, sh- it should have happened, and that, that's all I'm going to say about it. Tito Santana was the guy back in the day when there was a few that should have been world champion. You know, Ted oh, DiGiassi yeah. should have been a world champion in the WWF. Yep. Mr. Perfect should have had a world title. I think Jake the Snake Roberts should have been a world champion oh, at some yeah, point in time. for sure. There were tons oh, of those names yeah, back yeah. in the eighties at WWF that they didn't. They could have been world champion. They never used them though. They'd be intercontinental champion. I don't. I'm not quite sure. Maybe you know Brian quite feel me. I don't think Jake actually ever had a title when he was there. Did he? No. No. Sadly, he had titles <laughs> everywhere else, but uh, no. Sadly. Exactly. Not WWE. I'll tell you. I tell you one thing: watching Nick Bockwinkel and Tito Santana go to a one-hour Broadway at the Cow Palace for the AWA World Title—that's beautiful stuff, gentlemen. Ooh, I'm telling you I hope right that now. was good. An hour, an hour long match, huh? Bockwinkel wow. and Santana. So, uh, um, not to. I'm oh, sorry. Not to change the subject here, uh, but uh, did forget at the top of the show here. We do have. A very good lineup for tonight's show. Uh, Austin has booked us a special guest. I'm going to let him 
let us know who's come on. If you have been paying attention on Facebook, social media, Austin's been promoting this left and right because Austin is now more the one in charge of our ISW Radio Facebook page to make sure that the fans know when and where they can find us and who our guests are going to be. And Austin, if you don't mind, who is our guest tonight at the half hour mark? Hello? Austin, are you there? Austin? Austin, hello. Okay, we lost Austin for a second. I was talking with him. I lost him. I lost Austin, man. The show's not phenomenal anymore. Anyways, uh, we are going to be joined in our first hour tonight by former WCW manager Sonny Ono. Austin booked him as our guest tonight. We're going to be talking with him about his career and time in WCW. And in our second hour, we will be joined by the man we all know and love, the illustrious David Fuller, the founder of ISW Professional Wrestling, as he takes us into the final build-up for Old School Hustle. The second hour is all Old School Hustle. David will be on to host the second hour. He has a lineup of guests. I believe we'll be being joined by Doyle King, Americos, Lansoy, and Miss Dyslexia, I believe, is who his lineup is going to be. So the second hour, definitely going to be entertaining as we head into Old School Hustle on September 28th at the Sendera Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Austin, are you there? We lost Austin. Okay, hopefully he calls back in because Austin is actually going to be leading the interview with our guest, Mr. Sonny Ono. And now our show is not phenomenal anymore. <sighs> well, I'll tell you, with, uh, with Old School Hustle this weekend, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, as our uh, listeners know, you know, Mike, you and myself, we're going to be there. Uh, we'll be representing IHWE California, and uh, we'll be involved with a little ceremony with Linda and the Grappler. And plus, if things work out right, right with the Wi-Fi, uh, I may be going back to the play-by-play spot for a couple of matches before we actually uh, get the ball rolling. And uh, you and Dave will be uh, there with me. It's going to be a lot of fun from top to bottom. I mean, you've got Stan Hansen, you've got Jim Cornette, Black Bark, Gorgeous Gary Young, Barbara Goodish. The list goes on and on. And for you people in the Fort Worth, Texas area, if you don't have your tickets, shame on you. Get them now. Yes, definitely. Um, I can't say for sure. We can ask David in the second hour when he comes on. I believe there are a limited amount of VIP seats still available. VIP seats get you in at 3 o'clock for a VIP meet and greet with the legends that will be there on Sunday. Uh, you also get guaranteed you're going to be a front row ringside seat. Also, there will be a pre-show. I believe there are three or four matches set up for the pre-show at the four to five hour. And then 5 p.m. bell time, and we go straight into old school hustle. And, yes, we will be hosting a live podcast, God willing. Uh, it all depends on Wi-Fi signal and all that. We will be doing something from Old School Hustle. If we have to record a show to upload for later broadcasts, then we will do that. Joe and I are going to be at Old School Hustle. We will be doing something with the podcast as well as presenting the grappler who is making his return to Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm checking on the line now. I think we have Austin back. Austin, are you there? I am here. I have to change phone lines for a second here. I am... Live and well, thank God, right? Yeah, yes, it wouldn't be phenomenal if I was dead. I want to say it would not be phenomenal. phenomenal. Yes, there we go. Phenomenal level, 100%. I'm going to change the name of the show. IWE Phenomenal Wrestling Radio. I like it. Hmm. That sounds too hard <laughs> to pronounce for all those people who, you know, might not have attended school. And if you have seen the front row, if you have seen the front row of a wrestling show in certain areas of the country, it might be hard to say phenomenal because they don't have the teeth. But oh, okay, yeah, Mike. Okay, Mike. Yes. We've talked about this. Settle down now. <laughs> we we have listeners up here on the North Coast. Come on now. 
I love our listeners here on the North Coast. I love our fans. I'm looking forward to seeing them February 7th at Redwood Acres Fairgrounds. I'm going to say that a lot over the next few months because I want to sell a lot of tickets. But, yes, I love our fans. Some of them might be missing some teeth, but that, you know what? Who isn't missing a tooth? I don't know. I'm well, you know, quote, in, well, you know, <laughs> quoting, you know, quoting Nord the Barbarian uh, to Billy Jack Haynes on Portland Wrestling, you know you have summer teeth, some are yellow, and some are missing. Ooh. That's Nord the Barbarian, that is, people. There we go. So, Austin, we were discussing your guest for tonight's show, Mr. Sonny yes. Ono. He will be joining us momentarily. I hope you set that all up correctly. Yes, sir, I, yes. I did. I talked to him earlier today. All right. And I am, uh, yes, I'm, I'm hoping that he's calling in soon. I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't called in yet. But um, I guess as time goes on, we'll see. Yes, we will. We will we will see. I'm watching my studio board. They changed my studio board, though. I have to vent about this for a second. I loved my studio board the way it was. It was great. It was perfect. Everything was laid out. I have my phone callers. I have my audio clips right here in front of me. Now I got my phone call list clear over here to the left. I got my audio clips clear over here to the right. And in the middle of it all, I have the big screen that's telling me IHWE Radio, September 24, 2014, with our episode synopsis. I guess I can actually start a live chat with people. So if people want to come on into our little chat room and talk about our show, I can chat with them while I'm hosting the show. I did not know I had a chat function available through Blog Talk Radio, but I do. But they changed my studio board. I spent five minutes trying to figure out just how to use this damn thing. That yeah, you should have heard it when I, uh, when I called about three minutes before showtime. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah Don't change things on me people I like things the way they are And nothing fits into my screen the right way Anyways, Anyways Brian Do you have any more historical tidbits for us tonight Anything else happened other than Fido Santana and Greg Valentine Oh well, let's see Well I do well, well, have one bit of good news I think I managed to book My first guest For December 10th Yes. Go ahead. Who is our guest on December 10th? He is none other than the king of no rules, one half of the keepers of the faith, probably known as the Freak Squad, Gabriel Gallo. Gabriel Gallo is a longtime veteran, about 15 years in the business, mostly based out of uh, Arizona. But he and Dog Vitale have been known as the keepers of faith, and we've seen them at the Cauliflower Alley Club. Right now, he's recovering from a surgery on an ACL, and hopefully he'll be healthy in time for a CAC 50th reunion in uh, April. So, yeah, he's a pretty interesting story. Uh, be interested to know how he got trained, uh, how he got involved, and had some big matches. He's had some big matches lately. Had a big match, big feud against the Almighty Sheik. Uh, some real bloody feud. So, really looking forward to having him on the program. Definitely, and as Tremendous. we said, that is December, so we are booking well far in advance. We have a great guest list. Joe and I actually met him back in, what was it, 2004 or 2005? Somewhere in that time frame? Yeah, our, our, we're, yeah we're, uh, we're talking uh, the WC up in Salem, right? The World West Coast Wrestling Connection? I believe that's when I first met him, yes. Yeah, because that's when, that's when uh, we first met him. Uh, tremendous talent. Uh, former WCWC heavyweight champion, former tag team champion with Michael Modest. Uh, I mean, Michael Modest and Gallo, one heck of a tag team. Yeah, I oh, yeah. In fact, uh, I did find out something else rather interesting just a couple days ago. Gallo actually worked for David in ICWE. He was booked for a few shows a few years back and all that, so we do have that time to just found that out. Small world. So, yeah, we'll, it'll only be enjoyable talking to uh, Gabriel Gallo, GQ Gallo. When we met him, he was working as GQ Gallo. My wife liked him a lot. <laughs> but, yeah, great guy. I had a chance to talk to him at the reunion every year. He threatens me if I don't 
like, shake his hand when I walk by. Even if I'm on my way to the bathroom, like, I'm in a hurry. I got to go. You better shake my hand. Okay, man, how you doing? I right, got to go. Be back in a minute. I'm out. But, yeah, great guy. He is recovering from uh, knee surgery and all that. Uh, he will be back, uh, according to what he told me. He's hoping he should be back by March and will be at the Cauliflower Alley 50th anniversary. I don't think he'll ever miss one of the reunions. If anything, so he can participate in the strut off, which is a whole different type of critter, and we'll have to talk about oh, that yeah. sometime. Personally, Brian, you're going to be there next year. I'm going to be. Joe's going to be there. The three of us need to get together, figure it out, and two of us need to represent ISWE Radio and participate in the strut off. Can you have a three person strut off team? I don't know the rules. <laughs> You laugh, uh, Brian. I'm serious. Be. I think we, sh- I think we should join in. Joe, you want to join in? You want to be a part of the strut off? Oh well, well. Give me some time to think about that one. I'm throwing my hat in the ring right now. I'm participating in the strut off. I'll find a partner. I'll go down in the casino, find some lady who's had a few too many drinks who thinks I look wonderful, and I'll take her up there. and We'll do the strut off. But damn it, I'm putting my name in the in the ring. I'm gonna try this. If anything, I want to see it. I've only seen pictures. I haven't actually seen the spectacle of the Larry Sweeney Invitational Texarkana, whatever they call it, strut off. We'll talk with Gallo about that in December. Well, I know one thing with Larry Sweeney when, you know, rest his soul, when we saw him several years back up in Salem for the WC, he he had a strut. I'll tell you that, uh, from the dressing room to the ring, oh, my goodness, I'll tell you what. And we are having a little bit of a technical difficulty. We're waiting on our guests to arrive, and unfortunately, they have not shown up yet. So, if the case may be that our guest does not show up tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you get to listen to Brian and Joe and Austin and I just kind of ramble about whatever comes to mind. Because we may not have a guest. We're working on that. We have a plan. The plan was to have Sony Ono, the former WCW manager, on here. I mean, really one of the the funniest managers, in my opinion, uh, to be in WCW. For what he did, he actually was a guy who um, brought in the Japanese wrestlers into WCW. Guys like Psychosis, Ultimo Dragon, Bull Nakano, for example. I mean, the list goes on, and he was a guy that kind of mentored them and served as a translator when need be. But we're kind of having a couple of problems here trying to get him on. I did speak with him. I had told Michael earlier on the show um, uh, yesterday evening and earlier today. I'm, I'm it's kind of odd that he hasn't called in yet, but I guess that's, uh, you know, people run into problems. And I'm, I'm not sure what's happening with him. I'm getting in contact with him right now. Well, with Sonny uh, Ono. A little history on Sonny Ono. Well, he... Uh, He's real good friends with Eric Bischoff, and that's how he got involved, mostly through because they were involved in karate and in martial arts, and apparently uh, Sonny Sony was very, very talented, very good at it. So met him in the 1970s, and of course, when Eric Bischoff took over the reins at WCW, uh, Sonny Ono just came on board, and yeah, we saw Sonny uh, basically escort the Japanese wrestlers, mostly from New Japan Pro Wrestling. And a few others, yeah, some of the females, Bull Nakano, Akira Hokido. He even got uh, hooked up with uh, Ernest <coughs> Miller, which is uh, interesting as well. But, of course, once Bischoff was showed the door in 99, well, out with Sonny Ono, too. But, uh, yeah, I thought Sonny Ono did a good job just to make sure uh, the guys did all right as far as uh, Japanese workers. And, of course, I'm sure he had a fun time trying to make maneuver through the pitfalls and uh, landmines of the politics of professional wrestling. He sure made his presence felt at ringside, whoever he was managing in WCW. Oh, definitely. Because he would get in some nasty shots, too. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys, we're still trying to work out our, our little details here. Um, Austin, uh, are, are we any any lead? No, Austin. Forget Austin. The show, just our phenomenal level dropped about 50%. He's on here, though. We'll let him try to work Hello, his magic yeah. to see if we get Sunny. There we go. Any I lead on here, Sunny? I am here, Austin. 
No, it seems like I'm trying to contact him, him through Facebook. I've been doing the past days. I don't know why he's seen my message, so I'm assuming he might be calling within the minutes. I mean, I hope so. We we talked in the past days. Everything was okay. Everything was you know ready to go. So I'm not sure you know what the what the problem is. Maybe he ran into a couple of things. I'm assuming he's gonna call in the next few minutes since he just seen my message. So let's hope for the best. We will hope for the best, and unfortunately, this will be a very abbreviated interview, unfortunately, due to just time constraints and all that. But, you know, I'm sure we'll have a good chat with uh, Sonny if we can get him on here. And, you know, we'll try to have him on again on another date for a more extensive interview. But anyways, um, hmm, let's see. We talked about Don Manukian. We talked about the Stride Off. We talked about Old School Hustle. CAC 50th. Uh, see, Grappler has a book coming out. Uh, coming out. <laughs> Grappler has a book out. Came out back in August. Memoirs of a Masked Madman. Still selling well on Amazon. If you have a chance, pick up a copy of that. Best or or can go to the Sendera Center on Sunday, September 28th in Fort Worth, Texas. Have a chance to meet the Grappler, purchase a book, and have it signed by the man himself. But... We are now, being now joined. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Is, uh, is Sunny here yet or no? Uh, I am about to check on that now. We are being joined by an 812 area code. Oh, Sunny hey, Ono, is this you? No, it's not Sunny Ono. Sorry, guys. Who's this? It's probably the next best thing, though. This is Eddie Allen from the uh, Louisville, Southern Indiana area. Cricket, okay. Have you heard of that? <laughs> I was calling the plug. I actually am uh, working with a group. We're getting ready to go on TV in this market, following Ohio Valley Wrestling on Time Warner Cable Channel 185, and it's been a uh, awesome ride to get to that point. Our first show is this Saturday. I don't know if you have any listeners that are in the Indiana, Southern Indiana, Louisville market, or you yourself are familiar with that market and the political landmines that uh, exist there to get to, to where we're on television right after Ohio Valley Wrestling. But that's going to happen this Saturday, so if you guys have any listeners, I would just like to get the word out. All right. Sounds good. Sounds, sounds good. Cool. The wonders of live radio, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, let's do this a little more properly. I'll give you a chance. Give you just a second here. Uh, once again, the name of the group, where we can find you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's UWA Wrestling. You can find us if you go on YouTube. The name of the show is UWA Throwdown. We're going to put them on YouTube still, uh, as we have been. We've been doing them for about four months, and uh, you can find it on there. But if you're in the Louisville or Southern Indiana market, you can watch it on Time Warner Cable Channel 185. Uh, and like I said, that's going to be on uh, right after Ohio Valley Wrestling at 1 p.m. And we're also going to do a replay of the show on Monday night at 11 p.m., which is right after Raw. So we're going to try to, uh, you know, work in there and see if we can get something going in this market. Now, that's a good time slot right after Monday Night Raw. That That's a very sweet time slot, I'll tell you. Yeah, it was funny. We had that idea, and then uh, and then Danny Davis decided that how about, how about wrestling they're going to run at uh, midnight after our show runs at 11, uh, you know. So they're going to they're gonna follow us on that night, too. So the war is on, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on, guys. And hopefully uh, if you guys are in that market, check it out. If not, check it out on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Definitely check it out on YouTube. Uh, is there any – who are some of the guys working for you now that people might know from the indie scene? Right now, we, our heavyweight champion is guys Apollo, who's been around for a while. He used to work over in Ohio Valley Wrestling. Um, been around for a while that's in this territory. We've got our tag team champions are the Diamond Cartel, which is led by Scott Diamond and Stan Sears and Frank the Tank. Uh, I personally am the United States heavyweight champion. Uh, we have a hardcore division, but that's uh, you know how television is. We're kind of – in the flux with that right now as we're trying to move towards making sponsors happy. So not 100% sure if that's going to continue on. But, yeah, it's uh, it's been, as far as the political landmines, I mean, you just mentioned that we, you know, after Raw is a great time slot. Uh, we, we decided to go after Dave Davis's product, too, because we think that's a great time slot, being that it's, you know, built an audience. And uh, that ruffles feathers, obviously. It's a situation where, you know, he doesn't like the aspect that we're going to go right in there after that and, but, I mean, at the same time, Danny, I don't know if you're familiar with the Louisville area, Danny's been, you know, he was developmental 
for WWE for a while. He was development for TNA for a while, and I actually worked in production over at OVW for a few years and learned. That's where I kind of learned how to format shows and how to go after things like that. And, and he, you know, he does a really good job over there, but he's also trained a lot of workers that he no longer uses that have still stayed in the game. You know, they maybe the dream is gone, but they're still in the area. They're still working. You know, they're still good wrestlers. So the Southern Indiana market's pretty fertile with a lot of guys that are pretty talented, and they're just guys that don't get put out, you know, a lot. They don't have their careers on DVD or on YouTube or anything because it's a lot smaller market. But uh, we're hoping that, you know, instead of having five or six different federations in the Southern Indiana market that are all splintered out, we'll get one product that's on television and kind of have a one united Southern Indiana front. And that uh, Southern United Indiana front's going to try to be UWA, and we're going to try to pull this off, and, you know, if not, we give it our best shot. How long have you been in the business? What's that? How long have you been in the business? Me personally, uh, I've been around for four years. I started uh, up in, I actually got some some training in OVW when I was doing production over there. Uh, But uh, went to Madison for a while. I bounced around a lot at different federations in Indiana. There was a federation in Madison. Uh, It was at the time it was SCW, I believe now it's AWA Supreme. Uh, From there, I moved down to New Albany and did some stuff with uh, XCW, who also did stuff in Borden. Uh, there's Destination One Wrestling, uh, who does a great product out of New Albany, uh, ran by a guy by the name of Rick Brady. So there's a lot of different talented federations around here that, uh, that they're just, like I said, they're, they're splintered up because there's a lot of different people running them. As I'm sure most places are, but Louisville seems to have the more united front with uh, with Danny and his television product, and it's been that way for, you know, 20 years almost with him having a, almost a monopoly on local Saturday morning wrestling. So we're going to try to see if we can't, you know, Give something else out there. Give another option out there. Uh, yeah, one good. thing I always like to ask people is, uh, that? you know, you're working on you're working on the indie scene here as promoter. And on what is like your opinion of the current indie wrestling scene? We've been getting a lot of varying opinions on that from our guests in the past few weeks. Yeah, I mean, in this area here, it's a mixed bag because, like I just said, you've got you've got a lot of talented guys that were trained uh, from developmental that had that went through Danny's program and have a lot of the good basics. But then they get over into this side, and I don't want to start talking down about people that are competitors in my area, but the Southern Indiana market became kind of known in the late 2000s or early 2000s as being the Ian Rotten area, and there was a lot of good that came out of that. There was the you know, the CM Punk IWA days and a lot of good that came out of that. But when that era kind of moved on and those guys kind of moved on, it was replaced with more and more, you know, barbed wire and rolling around in Legos and thumbtacks. And I'm just speaking of the television, from the television mind now. That really kind of killed the area for the Southern Indiana to get on TV because where that does have a really good hardcore fan base and people will still show up. When you, you can't get that out to advertisers. You can't use that. You, you, there's, there's advertisers that are scared away from that type of product. So we've kind of had to go out of our way to not be so obviously PG-friendly as WWE is, is what a lot of people hate on the independent scene. Is, you know, they don't want to be too PG-friendly, but try to find a happy medium between something more family-friendly and still give people the, the high impact. In my area here, personally, I think it's become too much, too much roll around barbed wire, too much roll around thumbtacks. I think that's just because... Once they got kicked out of the Louisville scene, they came to the Indiana scene. That's who was giving them work is that kind of federation, which is which is fine. I'm not talking down about it, but I just I mean I just don't think that that's something that uh, I mean as a, as a father I don't I wouldn't take my kids to that particular show where that's all that it is. Uh, if you have one or two hardcore matches, that, that's great, but I just don't like that as a crutch. And I don't I don't know how that rubs you guys or what, but I, and I don't res- disrespect anybody's work, but it's just. Uh, that, that, in my opinion, is what's wrong with it. Not enough storytelling, too much garbage. Joe, this guy sounds like right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to tell stories. We want people to watch our show because, you know, they we've got some, some funny, we got funny bits mixed in with serious bits mixed in with drama mixed in with campy bits. I mean, it's going to be, that's what it's going to be. And it, it gives people a reason to care who's fighting where it's not, you know, cause, and, and I don't want to name drop because I won't even say who told me, but when I was working in developmental and OVW, when I was working in OVW, when they were working developmental for TNA, they had somebody back there and we were editing some footage, and it struck with me, and I just always will remember this as somebody who edits, and even it's carried over into myself as a worker, is there was a match that got to where there was four or five chair shots and, and two or three finishers, and then they got pinned them. 
And the guy just kind of said, you know, I, I don't want to say anything about it. But at one point in time in the fans' mind, you say to yourself, what, what chair shot was it? What finishing move was it? When you go for the overkill like that, it just it numbs the audience. You know, one chair shot, one finisher, you know, take it home. You don't have to give them seven chair shots. To, or at that point in time, the fans just get desensitized, and they don't know if it was the first one or the seventh one was the deadly one. So it just – it's and that stuck with me. And I, and I said to myself, you know, that's, that's true. It is true. And, and – not everybody's going to agree with that, but if I have the ability to produce a product, you know, maybe I'll put it in, in my vision here and maybe it gains the fan base, and, and that's what we're trying to do right now. And it has caught, caught on a little bit in this area. We've, we've been growing through the YouTube show, and obviously the next step is television, and, and that's been a lot of fun because we've wrestled a lot of feathers. Now, if you want me asking, okay. like while actually working with TNA and the OVW there for the developmental, do you think mm-hmm. they had a, a, a you know good grasp on what it took for – the next superstars to come up, or do you think they needed a little bit more changes than usual, you know, to kind of step up their game as uh, as far as their developmental goes in the process? A little bit of both, and they lost the TNA developmental a little too fast, in my opinion, because it was there and then it was gone. And uh, I think if – I don't know if that was – obviously probably was a financial decision on TNA's part, but uh, it was starting to take over. You started to see more reputable people come in as agents to help the younger guys – tell a better story and once TNA left and you know the Al Snow leave and, the, and the, all those people that were affiliated with TNA that are just fantastic wrestling minds are replaced with guys that have good wrestling minds but are not on that caliber so that instantly OVW's product does take a turn because you lose those agents that are helping those young guys now that's nothing to say nothing bad about because on the talent level OVW's roster is amazing I mean they do have and they got Marcus Anthony they got a lot of guys out there that are ready you know, physically to do things that are impressive. And, uh, you know, they need that seasoning. And that's, I think, what really stunk about it because, I mean, it could have been a lot better had TNA, I guess, had the resources to kind of stick it out a little bit longer and give them a little bit more time to develop. Um, yeah, that hurt them a lot when they left. It hurt them a lot when WWE left. And, and Danny's a great wrestling mind that he's been able to hit, take these hits and continue on with his product. You know, you know, he's still be able to put out a, a product that's, you know, it's 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 serviceable, and then there's 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 good and bad about it. But you know, it's, it's taken a hit since he's lost the belt. No, that that's clear. Brian, did you have a question for our uh, surprise guest? Well, uh, I'm looking at a poster of a most recent event from September 21st. Uh, so yeah. we had Apollo against the Ravishing Ronnie Roberts. We had a ladder match. For, uh, Skater Jackson against Spider Murphy. Yeah. So, and uh, at least you're doing uh, TV tapings uh, starting September 27th. So, yeah, how are you point. able to uh, tailor your product to the Clarksville, uh, Indiana area? We've that we've embraced the localness of it. The TV station we're going on is WBNA Channel 21, and they're going through a change too, where they want to become more local oriented. So, I actually had been in discussions with another channel, Channel 9, and it kind of fell apart when when the federation I was working with kind of fell apart. So that TV deal kind of went away with it. But uh, with the new Channel 21, they were really interested in local broadcasting. So what I did was I tried to learn everything that I could about, because I've been doing video editing since the OEW days, and I brought that back over to the Indiana side and was doing DVDs for all these different federations and YouTube releases and stuff like that just to kind of practice, but also to give the workers, you know, something that they could show their fans and to build awareness of the product. But when we uh, when we started to work on uh, you know towards actually doing TV, what I decided to do was you know I learned as much as I could about you know how television goes about getting local spots. Like if you see a commercial for a local merchant that airs on local TV, you know what do they charge for that? What do they charge for editing? Uh, what do they charge to get on the air? And and what I did was I undercut that business model as cheap as I possibly could uh, to make it a very local show. Like all of our advertisers, I don't know if you are local or, or have access to OVW. Or I don't know, and I don't know what part of the country or how your local independent federations do it. But Ohio Valley Wrestling runs commercials for themselves during their show, which is fine. But as far as from a revenue standpoint, they're not making any money because you're paying yourself, you're paying for TV time, and you're not doing any advertisers. Since this television station told me they wanted local content, I took that to the streets and said, "Hey, I'm going to get local advertisers." And now I'm going to get local advertisers. If you're a merchant and you've ever wanted to have a TV commercial on TV and you've asked about it, I'm going to blow your mind when I tell you the price that it's going to cost you to get it all there because it's, it's going to be the price of, like, an Arby's combo. And 
you know, putting down just a lot of ground game to get these commercials filmed and edited to make these advertisers happy so that I have and we have as a, a production company, because I also work with a production company, we have an army of sponsors. And this wrestling show is just one of the things that we're going to start to bring to this TV station and want some more local content. But, you know, to have an army of sponsors, that's rule number one. And I'm, I'm proud to tell you right now, gentlemen, one of the proudest things I am of this whole entire project is our first show airs Saturday the 27th, and the show is aired, it's paid for for the next few months, and it's already turning a profit. It's already in the black before we've aired a single show, and we're going to use that profit, not greedily like some of these people will do from time to time. We're going to use that profit to invest into our mail order merchandise so we can expand that to where we sell more DVDs and shirts to where we can also expand our markets to where maybe we can put a show on at 3 o'clock in the morning in the Cincinnati market, knowing that we're not going to sell any additional tickets, but maybe sell additional DVDs and also get some additional eyes on our product. So we're really thinking about it as, I mean, when you think about it, guys, and I know you guys are probably, you're doing this now, so you're hardcore wrestling fans. And you think about, you know, how you take a live event like an indie wrestling show and you're trying to turn it into a TV property. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do because you got to take it from, you know, what indie wrestling is, and you got to start telling stories like you see so that mm-hmm. the TV audience can follow along a, a uh, uh, episodic type deal um, where you care about the storylines that are going on. So it's been tough It's been tough to train, retrain these guys that have been so used to doing one thing and not, you know, taking their time, so to speak, and not having that luxury anymore. You have to, you know, you have to get to it. You have to get in and out really quickly and tell your story in three or four minutes sometimes and, you know, that that sucks sometimes. You you want to be out there longer, but if you're gonna if you're gonna do this project, you're gonna do it the way that it's gonna work, and and that's what it's got to be. And the roster we yep. have, that I couldn't be more proud of. They're doing great, and it's it's, it's something we're all excited for. Now where do you see like something? You got... in... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Did oh no, you... no, go ahead, Austin. Go ahead. But I was gonna say, where do you see your company, and then say like in five years, where do you plan to be in that time frame? I, and it's personally my, just how I am personally, I, I mean, this is a, uh, I wouldn't say a part-time job for me, but I have another career in, out there in the world. This is a, a part-time deal for me. Personally, and I've said this a million times to some guys that I work with in my production company, I would love to be able to hand the keys to this vehicle off to the next generation of our production guy who then takes it and it even expands it beyond what I've done. But what I want to do right now is give it a, a solid, true foundation of, you know, here we've got DVD merchandise that comes out that's quickly produced. I mean, it's not great. Right now we're still we're going to expand our, our abilities to do better with our videos. Right now we're, we're low depth, but that's what our TV station is. We do two camera cuts. I'd like to do three camera cuts. Uh, we'd like to mic up the sound better, which we're doing the next show. So continue, and we worked in some really nice packages as far as, like, backstage packages, rewind packages so that show you things that happened previous weeks. We want to see all that up, and I want to get this to be – this vehicle that is a TV property that is not just UWA, which is what it is now, but basically is a conglomerate of all Southern Indiana wrestling as a united front. And it's a product that grows and grows and grows into other markets, Cincinnati, Lexington, uh, Indianapolis, and it continues to grow through that. But as far as its main growth five, ten years from now, I, I'm not, I don't want to think that far. I want to think that I can build it up, this, this vehicle, and then, and then hand the keys off to some other people, and we can all drive it together and see where it goes. But you know, that's that's my goal, is to make it really to make it something for the you know the people that want to be involved in it as passionately as I am, and there are people out there, you know, to make this something that's our vehicle to to grow and take it as far as we can. All right, Joe, you got one last question? Yeah, just basically, I, just, I well, not really a question, but a comment. Uh, you know, from what you know, I've heard. Uh, you know, you've got your head on straight, and the vision that you have, uh, you know, short term or long term, very impressive. Uh, you know, job well done, sir. Uh, you, yeah, you're doing oh, good. You. Just, just, just keep doing what you're doing. And like I said, uh, you know, it's a, it's a day by day process. You don't want to jump five steps because if you do, you'll fall back twenty. You know, you just go step <laughs> by step, and it seems like you're you're on pace to do uh, to get some success. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, and uh, I hope that uh, if, if you've got some listeners that are in that market or even out of market, like I said, you can find it on YouTube. You know, give us a look, and if you don't like it, give us a look in a month. You know, just remember that name and, and see. Maybe it's not for you today, but just keep keep giving us a shot because we're going to keep trying to evolve and see what we can do, what we can grow from it. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, and uh, that's UWA Wrestling. And this is, and I'm sorry when you first came on, I did not catch your name. My name is Eddie Allen, and uh, like I said, I'm the current Eddie Allen. United 
state heavyweight champion. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you guys track down Sonny Ono. I want to hear him talk because I know that there's a lot of interesting stories from, from that guy. We will have Sonny Ono on on a later date. Uh, well, I hope. <laughs> Is there a way uh, I can uh, work do you guys, do you guys uh, put this archive? I'm sorry, do you archive this where yes. I can share this with folks? Okay, cool. Yes, um, you can find us on blogtalkradio.com forward slash IHWE radio. Uh, all our episodes are archived. Well, thank you guys for talking to me. I really appreciate it. A pleasure. You're thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. All right. That was Eddie Allen with UWA Wrestling. Very surprised guest. But, hey, in live radio, you go with what you're given, and hey, I, I think we made it work. But now we're going to get into the next gear. It is time for the second hour, and it is time to bring on my boss. We all know him. We all love him. And this Sunday at the Sendera Center, on the 28th at the Sendera Center in Fort Worth, Texas, old school hustle. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, the illustrious David Fuller. David, how are you doing tonight? How's it going? I appreciate y'all having me on. It's a busy, busy week. I've been doing good. You on Facebook, man. You're everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's up, guys? We're not really, man. We're having a good time. Really? The dead yeah. air, man. Dead air. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Wake up out we were there. For a loop when our, we were thrown for a loop when our guest didn't show up tonight, so we kind of had to, you know, fix a few things here and there, and we ended up getting a different guest who just kind of called in to promote his show real fast, and he kind of became our impromptu guest for the evening. But we're here now right. to talk about Old School Hustle. Well, that's good. Well, Old School Hustle was, of course, this Sunday, uh, September 28th at the Sundara Center in Florida, Texas. It is the biggest live event in IXWE history. It's one of the bigger events that Texas has seen in quite a while. Uh, it is stacked from top to bottom. There will be several people flying in to take part in this show. There will be several people driving from all ports of the southwest in the country to witness this show. Uh, mm. Excuse me. Uh, the lineup is uh, an all-star lineup. Uh, you would have to, to see all this talent. You would have to drive uh, to several different states. Uh, and I don't know if anybody has the time to do that. Uh, however, if you want to see all of it under one roof, all you got to do is come to Fort Worth on Sunday and be part of Old School Hustle. <coughs> I'm extremely proud of the work my team, and let me underscore that word, my team has done in promoting and creating awareness for this show. Uh, it is an experience. It has it been from everybody, from my, my wife, to my family, to you guys on the podcast, to our production team, to our superstars, to our Hall of Famers. They have all put in the time to make sure that Sunday is something that is just revolutionary. And I hate using that word, but I truly think Sunday is going to be something that you just, you're just just going to have to be there to witness it. It's going to be unbelievable. Um, it's just, wow. I, I could sit here and hype it <coughs> for uh, for hours and, uh, you know, it uh, it wouldn't do it justice. It's just going to be it's just going to be fantastic. So, but at this point, I am going to bring on our first guest. And let me see if I can pull him up here. If I can get him on. Uh, he is a current superstar in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is a former WWE superstar. He's a former TNA superstar. And he cut his teeth right here in Texas. Lance Boyd. I get him on the line here. Hello? Hey, Lance, this is David with IHWE. What's up, man? Good, man. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. You're on IHWE Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, he is one of the most imposing physical specimens you'll ever see. He is a New Japan Pro Wrestling superstar. He has done it all. 
the American Psycho, Lance Hoyt. Lance, welcome to IGW Radio. Thank you very much for having me on, man. No problem. Uh, well, I'm going to throw a couple questions out to you right off that. Um, I, know you're, okay. I know you're extremely busy. So, Sorry. I'm, I'm no, I've known you for years. I've, yep. uh, I've watched you come up to this territory, and it's guys like you who make me proud and make Texas Thanks. still a success story. Jim Ross said it a few uh, months ago when he did an interview for us. Jim Ross said, uh, no state has contributed more stars to professional wrestling than the state of Texas. So it's a big, it's and, a big state, so. <laughs> yeah, and they're still following it today with people like you. Yep. Um, what is it? You're finally coming to IWE, and all it was is, is uh, you know, you Lance is not around his hometown very much anymore. He's always touring. He's either in Japan or he's in Australia or he's in England or he's in Pro Wrestling Syndicate up north. He's all over the place. <laughs> Finally, we got the schedules to pan out. So uh, what's it yep. going to be like you stepping into a new promotion, uh, new to you, uh, this weekend? You know, for me, it's just part of what is the business, and that's reaching out and going out and getting into every place that you can possibly get into it. What I've been seeing of IHWE is just if you're growing, you're creating a great product. You've got a lot of the top talent in the state and coming in from other places. And I appreciate that you would have me in there and being involved. Uh, for me, it's, it's just another awesome experience. It's fun to get out there and see new people and see new fans. A lot of the DFW fans haven't been around and seen me, maybe tired of me, who knows, uh, you know, for all the time that I've been in this business in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area. But to reach out and be a part of IHWE now and, and to be working with some of the top talent in and around everywhere, um, for me, it's just exciting. It's awesome. I love it. Now, Lance will not be – Lance is a uh, – he's a physical specimen that you have to see to believe, number one. He's not going to be the only overbearing, strong, powerful guy gene in the building on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> He will actually be joined by uh, the man who made that um, that word famous, one of the men yeah. that did, Stan Delary yeah. and Hanson. Now, I know you're a huge fan of Stan's. I know you've done some uh, I know, the big dome shows. You've been together with Stan and New Japan Pro Wrestling. But being right. back here in your home state, your home uh, territory, Dallas-Fort Worth, being in the show, being in the building with Stan Hanson, what does that mean to you? You know, it's really cool because I have been around him many times in Japan. The first time meeting him wasn't even at the Tokyo Dome. It was at the uh, Ryogoku Sumo Hall in Tokyo area. Uh, you know, we got to have a little bit of a conversation, realizing that he's in Waco, Texas, not that far from, from Dallas and all that. And, but this will be the first time on American soil, and I think it's kind of special that it's happening in Texas, that uh, Stan the Man, the Larry, the, the legend, especially in Japan, uh, and I will be, you know, in the same building at the same time. Hopefully, maybe get to share a little ring space. Who knows? Well, that's what people have been asking me. They've been asking me, like, well, what's Lance going to do? And I said, well, you know what? Here's the bottom line. Lance, <laughs> our Lance's deal isn't even going to be signed until Sunday. And, and you don't, you know, no one, I can't, no one can, can you know, no one can even fathom what you're going to do. I know... Uh, we've had many conversations. You have goals. Obviously, I know you're going to be watching right. what ICWB champion Matt Riviera does. Absolutely. Uh, I know you're going to be watching the Mike Fox Franco D'Angelo match because you know those two like the back of your hand. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, one of those guys basically helped groom me in the business, and then I'd like to believe I at least got Franco started in the business, and he's absolutely done everything else on his own, and then taken this business by the horns and made it his own. Absolutely. And I know you're going to be watching the DFW Championship match with Americos, who, my goodness, seems to be uh, breaking barriers every day. He's going to be stepping in, defending against a man you know very well, Charlie Haas. Oh, man, yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the level of talent that's going to be at IHWE on Sunday is just it's dumbfounding, and it's still going to miss the show. Because the Cowboys are playing and losing, so they should just kind of forego that DVR and do whatever they got to do to watch it a little later and come out and see the HW show. It is going to be awesome. Uh, now, another thing I want to mention is uh, Lance has uh, he has helped uh, he has helped this territory 
over the past 15 years, uh, PCW, NWA, XCW. Uh, he's helped a lot of promotions. He's come up and through, and I've seen him since day one. Uh, he has also had a hand in training many, many of the superstars who are currently wrestling up and down the roads of Texas today. And I think it's a huge testament to Lance's character. He uh, he has done it all, and he still continues to give. He's still doing seminars. Whenever he's in town in the state of Texas, he goes up and down the roads to give seminars at different places for the NWA and such, and he will still uh, help anybody. And I truly believe Lance is a true superstar because he doesn't just talk it, he walks it. He's still a big deal in Japan. And being a big deal in Japan, is a, it's, it, it, it's as big as a deal as it was when Brody and Hanson and Dr. Death and Terry Gordy were doing it. It's still it's all a that. big deal. I appreciate that, man. You know, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that I've always had a passion for the business and I've always wanted to be successful. I've had bumps in the roads and I've never let any of that stopped me and slowed me down. I've just went on and found a new path. And, you know, Japan's really, Japan's really truly made me what I should have been all along, but it's given me an open door that I, I never expected, and it's just been an awesome experience. Well, very good, Lance. Well, uh, I'm, for one, looking forward to, to seeing you again on Sunday. Uh, having you on the roster is a huge deal for us. You're one of the few people that I've never had the opportunity to work with that I actually wanted to work with. So, uh Thank you for coming on, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me on. I'll see you guys Sunday. Take care, Lance. Thank you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the American psycho, Lance Hoyt, and he is making his IHWE debut this Sunday at Old School Hustle. So, right now... Give me one second here. Get my phone back on the charger. And let's see here. Okay. All right, Michael. Trying to figure out who I had next. I don't remember. All righty. As we've been telling our guests all night tonight, the wonders of live radio, while David is getting set up with his next guest, I would like to remind everyone that this Sunday we will have a live episode from the Old School Hustle in Fort Worth, Texas. We will not be airing next Wednesday night in our normal time slot because, well, I will not going to lie about it. It's my 42nd birthday. Family wants to take me out. I'm going out, and I'm taking Joe with me. Joe, make sure you look pretty. Uh, so we will be returning on October 8th, and our guest that night will be the one, the only, the original Mr. Wonderful, Brock Riddle. And as I said last week, and I've said many times before, I will introduce Brock Riddle. I will not do it properly, according to him. And the rest of the interview will be just him asking and answering his own questions. Because that's just what Rock Riddle does. It's going to be a great interview, though. If you have not had a chance to listen to Rock Riddle, tune in October 8th. You are going to leave... You're, you're going to enjoy the show. You're going to leave with a great opinion of a great guy, and you're going to hear some awesome stories. And definitely the man has a sense of humor, so it's going to be a fun interview. I've had the pleasure to see Rock Riddle, <clears throat> Russell, in person uh, back in the early 70s for Roy Shires in the Cow Palace and drew a lot of heat at that time. Uh, undefeated on television until he crossed paths with a couple of guys named Patterson and Stevens. And, <laughs> well... Like like I said, Rock Riddle, very talented wrestler. Uh, actually, I believe he hung out with either, I think it was like Rip Hawk or Swede Hanson. I want to say Rip Hawk, uh, going back to 71 or 72, I believe. Brian might have some info on, on this one. It sounds about right. I'll have to double check for sure. But, uh, yeah, he's he's was around for quite a while. And I know Cow Power oh, right, Hour, they mentioned him on the website. Okay. Sorry, Brian. Sorry, Brian. David, do you have right, our next guest on the line? We're going to get our next guest on the line. He is uh, one of the uh, names you're starting to see more and more as you read wrestling websites and you see results at different places all over. Uh, this Sunday, she will be stepping inside the ring 
to compete for the first ever Queen of the Ring, Miss Dyslexia. Are you on? I'm here. All right. You're Michael's buddy. He doesn't have many. I think <laughs> the main people Michael calls friends consist on this show. And his family doesn't count because they're his family. They have to like him because he's a breadwinner. <laughs> but the main people Ow. who Michael calls friend are on this show right now. So. Uh, well, you know. All right. So anyway, so a few weeks ago on ah. TV, everybody saw what Miss Dyslexia did. I got emails and tweets, and I'm like, oh, why didn't you do anything? Why didn't you suspend her? I didn't suspend her because it ain't nothing that I wouldn't have done when I was a competitor. And it, it wasn't anything that Black Bart didn't do. Because Black Bart did much worse. So yeah. at least you didn't bring a branding iron to the ring. Peyton and Delilah Doom should be glad that you weren't Black Bart. Well, so. they should also learn a lesson from that. And the lesson I feel like I taught them is, you step into a ring, and it doesn't matter if you're prepared for a match or not. You're in a wrestling ring. You should be prepared. Don't turn your back, and don't trust anybody because you're in a ring. We're in wrestling for a reason, and that's to win. Well, that's true. And you had you had the opportunity to make an impression, and it was your first time back in ICW in a long time, and that was the first woman's match that we had in a long time. And you wanted to make a statement, and I think you did. So here, now, now here's the thing. And this Sunday, uh, I have sat down with Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette is partially responsible for this concept. So uh, send your hate mail to him. Tweet at Jim at the Jim Cornette, by the way. And you can purchase all of Jim Cornette's uh, wonderful merchandise at jimcornette.com. Okay. Delete email now. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Uh, Sorry, folks. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. So this match <laughs> we've got on Sunday is a queen of the ring, and it's an unusual match. It, it, it's a variation of the old suicide tag team match. Essentially, two teams uh, will team up, and they have to win. You have to team up with somebody even if you don't like them. Even if you're sworn enemies, you have to team up. It's going to be Mr. Dyslexia teaming up with Jessica James. Jessica James just got back to the United States of a very successful tour in Japan. She is one of the most decorated women's wrestlers Texas has seen in years. You're going to be teaming up with her against Peyton Gates and Delilah Doom. Now, Peyton and Delilah are the young lions in this match. You have pretty much told everybody, I don't care who I'm teaming up with, I'm going to win it. But now the situation is, is you have to win. You have to team up with Jessica, even though you two are no strangers to each other. Because if you don't win the tag match, you don't get the opportunity to wrestle your partner for the queen of the ring. What are you... What's your mindset going into this? Because you don't like anybody... The only reason me and you get along is because I pay you. <laughs> you don't like anybody, so how is this working out? I, I don't like anybody, but I don't hate anybody. I, right. I I am in wrestling to move to be somebody, and if that means I have to team up with Jessica, I have to team up with her. I know Jessica very well. I know she knows me. We've actually just wrestled recently at another at another promotion. She she got her arm bar on me. So, but that also means that I've studied and watched my matches back to see what I what I did wrong, and also I can sure. see what we can use to team together against Peyton and Delilah. And we have been wrestling longer, and we can we know a bit more. So hopefully that helps us in that aspect. But then if we win. I have no problem turning on her just like I did to Peyton and Delilah. I have no problem with that at all. Well, here's a question, Miss Dyslexia, and this is a question that goes for everybody. This goes for everybody in the match. You see, you're right. You and Jessica are the most experienced one. On paper, Delilah and Peyton don't have a chance, but 
if you and Jessica, if y'all aren't cohesive, if y'all make one mistake, one of those ladies is going to get the drop on you. And then it'll be you two watching them two wrestle for the queen of the ring. Keep that in mind. That's that's very true, and it only takes three seconds to lose. So that's why I, I've i been on my game lately. I've been watching a lot of wrestling. I've been training hard. I've been traveling the country and learning different ways of wrestling. Um, and that's not to say that they don't know what they're doing, because I know... I know Delilah trains in San Antonio with Funaki. I know she she does really well out there. I've seen her matches. But me going to shows that I'm not wrestling on, that's that says something. It says that I'm not I I might be going at a good time, but I'm there watching. I have my eye on people. I pay attention to what's going on around me. Um don't let my name fool you, because I pay. I I might mix up my words, mix things up, but I do pay attention, and it means I just have to concentrate more to get what I need to do. Now this Sunday, there's going to be a lot of major players there. There's going to be Jim Cornette. There's going to be Stan Hansen. There's going to be Lyndon, Kyle O'Reilly, Haas, Hoyt. Hoyt had a hand in your training. Morgan Dollar is going to be there. There's going to be several representatives there from the Cauliflower Alley Club. You're not only going in the ring to win a queen of the ring. You're not going in there just to walk out with the trophy and with the prestige. You are going in there to impress everyone there who has any kind of stroke anywhere. Would that be a fair statement? That's a very fair statement, um, especially since last time you guys, I was on IHWE radio, you guys announced that I was nominated for Future Legends Award at Cauliflower, and since there's a lot of Cauliflower representatives there, I'm obviously wanting to impress them, um, and all. Are you there? Hello. All right, live I didn't radio, ladies and gentlemen. I agree. I think you did. I I do like my fans. I do like them. Um, so you know, um, I don't Ooh. hate anybody, but at the same time, I I'm in it to impress people. I'm in it to win. I'm in it to make something of myself and go other places. And um, I love Texas. It's where I, where Miss Dyslexia was trained and born and created and. This is where I started, and I'm trying to branch out, but uh, it's still my home. I want to impress everybody, not just not just the representatives, but also the fans, because that's that's what we do this for. Well, that, I, I agree with that, and I'm I'm very proud of you. I've I've watched you prosper. God, I feel like the old guy. <laughs> Man, I feel like the old guy. Every time I talk to one of y'all, I talk to Gigolo, I talk to you, I just feel like the old guy. Anyway, I've seen you come up. I've seen the things you've done. Uh, we've always got along really well, uh, even in the most heated times. Uh, so, uh, hey, and you know what? I would be very proud for you to be the queen of the ring. I know that match is going to be fantastic. Uh, I know Peyton and Delilah are in for an experience, a learning experience. Uh, they might as well bring a notebook and a pen because I think they're going to go to school. I think it's big that Jessica James is making her IWE debut. It's going to be at a beautiful venue. And, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people there, both behind the curtain and in front of the curtain. So uh, Sunday is going to be a really big day for women's wrestling in the state of Texas, and we're proud to uh, – we're proud to have it. All right, uh, Facebook and Twitter links real quick before we get Dol King on, and maybe he won't mispronounce your name. <laughs> it's Miss Dyslexia, so M I S S D I S S underscore L E X I A for Twitter, and then just M I S S D I S S L E X I A for Facebook. Um, I do have, I am maxed out on followers, but you can follow me. I also have a like page. I update everything all the time. I might be even a little annoying, but I I keep Facebook and Twitter pretty updated. Very good. Well, I will see you Sunday at the Sundari Center when you battle for the Queen of the Ring. Uh, Good luck in your training, and uh, we will see you then. Thank you for joining us tonight. All right. Thank you.
Oh, bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Flexia. Give me a few minutes I get our next number on. I believe we have the legendary Doyle King about to come on. He's going to talk about old school hustle, so go ahead and uh, talk amongst yourselves, and I'll get Doyle King pulled up here. Go ahead, guys. Brian, why don't you take this time right now to uh... – you messaged me the other day. Why don't you let us know the results of uh, the NWA title defense just this past weekend? I think you know what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. That'll give us a good a chance to, well, it, it'll affect old school hustle, too. Uh, September 19th, Sherman, Texas. Well, Matt Riviera, and as we suspected, went up, came up on his old tricks. He did win the match, but he did not win the title. And title cannot change hands on a disqualification or a count-out unless it's specifically stipulated. So uh, Matt Riviera comes in only as the IHWE heavyweight champion. I also want to clarify one other thing. Now, September 20th, now NWA Smoky Mountain and NWA Worldwide Wrestling out of North Carolina had tournaments. To, they're going after the vacant NWA United States Tag Team Championship. Well, we still got to wait until October 11th. Uh, to, for the finals of both of those tournament winners. One of those winners turned out to be Air America, Skyline Cruz, and Darren Daring. So coming October 11th at Kingsport, Tennessee, we will see new NWA United States Tag Team Champions. Uh, NWA Worldwide Wrestling, they had a, their own version of the Crockett Cup tournament. Now get this, the Crockett Estate is taking uh, issue with that. So, uh, who knows how uh, that'll turn out? But just want to at least get that clarification. And uh, but yes, Matt Riviera coming in to old school hustle will still as IHWE heavyweight champion, but still reigning NWA World Heavyweight Champion Rob Conway. And I would just like well, to let David know that I do have some friends more than okay. just what's on this show. Okay. Thank you. Well, now that we got the fictional, oh, we got might, the fictional part of the show out of the way. Uh, I might also yeah, add that I am sporting the Miss Dyslexia t-shirt tonight, so when of everyone's there at Old are. School Hustle, head up to the merchandise stand, purchase one of these wonderful shirts. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, planned that, that way. I just put it on this morning. Do that. Do that. All right. Yeah, Matt Riviera, uh, he uh, – he let me know uh, this past weekend that, uh, well, I had, uh, had people there watching. Me and Matt still got some issues to work out. We're going to have a face-to-face on Sunday. I'm ready for anything. I just want to make that perfectly clear. I told, uh, I said it a couple weeks ago here, hey, kudos to Matt Riviere for hanging with Rob Conway. It was a big deal. Sold out the uh, venue in Sherman. And uh, Matt Riviere came very, very close to win in the NWA Heavyweight Championship, but he did defeat Rob Conway. He did defeat the NWA World Heavyweight Champion by a technicality. There's not a whole lot of people walking around that can say that they beat the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. So I think what Matt did was is he ins- he insured his rematch later down the line. So I'm going to try to get Doyle King on right now on IHW Radio. Stand by. Doyle is here. Tell you. Hello. Doyle, this is David with IHW Radio. How's it going? Hey, buddy. What's up? You're on IHW Radio, ladies and gentlemen. He's a legendary radio personality, and he has been around professional wrestling in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for a few years. He's the one and only Doyle King. Doyle, welcome to IHW Radio. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. Nice to be here. Good to hear from you. Oh, good to hear from you. So you are you made your return to Fort Worth a couple weeks ago at IHW Showdown. Uh, what, was, uh, what was it like being back in the ring in Fort Worth? Oh man, you know, brought a, brought back a lot of great memories from uh, doing shows for Bill Watts and the UWF over at the Cowtown Coliseum. Fort Worth's always been one of my one of my favorite places to go. I remember as a kid going to that same arena when it was the Northside Coliseum, and it was nothing but wood and a 
dirt floor for the rodeo arena. It was uh, it was good times watching Fritz back in the old days uh, there as a kid growing up. Um, so Fort Worth brings a lot of uh, a lot of great wrestling memories back to me. The shows at Will Rogers and uh, especially the ones when they when they uh, when they'd have the rodeo there uh, or some event. And we'd go over to the theater and wrestle on the stage. Uh, so uh, you know, we, we had a good time. We had a good time in Fort Worth at the uh, at the martial arts place. Uh, yeah. It was good to be back in Fort Worth, and I had a I had a, I had a real great time, man. It was uh, it was certainly chaotic. Uh, this Sunday, old school hustle. You're back in Fort Worth. You're back at IHWE. It's our pleasure to have you here. I remember watching you for years, and you've got a perfect voice, and you you're just good for good for, great for wrestling. Uh, Jim Cornette, thank you. He has he has told me so. He has man. He he told me I was on the phone with him. I want to say last week, and Jim told me that he would come to he would come to Q102 and hang out with you throughout the night. Y'all would just listen to listen to old tunes and just hang out together. And Jim was very excited to hear you were going to be at Old School Hustle. How's it? How does it feel seeing old Jim Cornette again? <laughs> well, you know, I, I haven't seen uh I haven't seen Jim in well, it's been probably two decades uh since he's uh since he's been in this in this area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and we did have some we did have some good times and it was uh it was new rock and roll back then, David. It may be very old now, but <laughs> uh, and he he did uh, he he'd hum, he'd come in. Uh, Dennis came in uh, a couple of times with him. We'd play rock and roll and and uh, take wrestling calls. And uh, I remember one night one of the funniest comments. And this was all live before we had delay and 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 you know people didn't have such foul mouths. But uh, this one lady called up and I was right ready to hit the commercial. So Jim couldn't come back with any retort, but she called up and she said, Jim Cornett, I'd like to take that tennis racket, shove it right up your ass. Boom. Commercials. It was, uh, it was funny. Of course, when he came back from the break, he had plenty to say, uh, it's Jim Cornett after all. Uh, so it's going to be great to hear, uh, to hear from him. Uh, you know, and I'm sure that uh, that he has some sort of plan in mind for uh, the matches that night. I don't know who's he's involved with. Uh, do you have any idea? He's gonna be the. He's gonna be the. Any we, comment on this? He's the guest commissioner for the night. He's gonna be working with me and Black Bart for the evening, and uh, he's gonna. Can you imagine Jim Cornette having authority? Uh, I don't know what I've signed on for. Well, he's always wanted power, and if you've uh, if you've given that to him, it should be uh, it should be interesting to see uh, if any conflict develops between him and Black Bart. You couldn't ask for two more different personalities, uh, although they probably have the same goal in mind. That's true. Also, on Sunday, you're going to be reunited. With a couple of people, uh, you're going to be reunited with Craig Johnson. Uh, he's going to be there. Oh, uh, all right. Be good to see him Travis, again. And Travis Baxter. Uh, he will you're, be there as well. And <laughs> so uh, that should be that should be interesting. Yeah, and he had nothing but wonderful things to say about you. He said you mentored him and you taught him so much. And he was ecstatic when he heard that you and Travis is going to be our announcer for the evening. Craig and Doyle are going to be handling our interview segments for IHWE TV, uh, so that should be fun. Uh, but Travis had nothing but wonderful things to say about you. So uh, it's really cool to have you, Craig, and Travis together. Travis said it's like three generations of uh, the, the ring announcers for the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I think that's really cool. It'll be good to get uh... – uh, to get everybody back together, uh, although we worked in in a little bit different uh, eras, uh, you know, you do almost have a, another three generational thing going there. Yes, yes. So, uh, well, this Sunday's ICW Old School Hustle, 
Um, let me see. Stan Hansen's going to be there. The grappler Linden's going to be there. Jim Cornette's going to be there. Uh, Doyle, you sat there and watched uh, tonight's ICWTV at 10 o'clock. That triple threat match is going to be on between Americos, Gregory James, and Ashton Jacobs. There was chaos afterwards with the Rabbit Empire. Right on. Uh, Charlie Haas was there, and it was you know we announced that he was going to challenge for the DFW Championship. Uh, you know, now that's uh, a that's a match that I can't wait to see. Uh, yeah. Seeing seeing Haas back in the ring again. Yes. Did you? Uh, what did you think of the IWE Superstars? Do you were you uh, were you pretty happy with what you saw? You know, it's a different era, but Absolutely. I think uh, you know I think we have it is we've got some old school, uh, new school. You, you've got some uh, you've got some good talent there, and what I am r- more pleased to see uh, than anything is that uh, the referee has power, uh, the commissioner has power, and this thing is going to be under control, and it's not going to go absolutely. Can I say ape shit wild with no consequences for anyone? You know, it's it's good to see that uh, a five count is a five count, and you'll lose the match if you go over. A ten count on the outside of the ring. You can't fight on the outside of the ring in the crowd. That's where you get people hurt. Yes. Yes. And we will have our barricades at the Sendera Center. And I have brought in some extra legendary Hall of Famers to make sure nothing gets out of hand. James Beard is going to be there helping officiating along with All right. Manny. And we're also All right. Going to That's Hansen. great. And gorgeous Gary Young. I just talked to gorgeous Gary Young. He's going to be here as well. So we're going to have plenty of people there to make sure nothing gets out of hand. So uh, all right, it sounds like a, it sounds like it's going to be a great show. Uh, yeah, I can't wait right, to be a, a part of it. Well, you can follow Doyle on Twitter at uh, I am Doyle King. Correct. Right, I'm Doyle King. All right, Doyle. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you again for accepting my invitation to come a few weeks ago. You made all the difference in the world, and thank you for accepting the return invitation to come this Sunday. I'm looking forward to working with you again, and uh, you've always been good to me, and I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll show the fans a good time. We'll see you guys Sunday. Thank you, Doyle. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Doyle Kane. <laughs> And he is going to be there on Sunday. He will be partaking in our IHWE TV broadcast. Also at 10 o'clock tonight, right here on IHWENow.com. The same place you can hear archives of IHWE radio. The DFW Championship is on the line. Americos, Gregory James, and Ashton Jacobs. You have to see this match to believe it. It is the first ever triple threat, two out of three fall match that I've ever seen. I am the special guest referee. And you will not believe what happens after the match. So you need to watch that at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time on YouTube and on IHWBeatingNow.com. So, Doyle, uh, Doyle, what happens after the match is what I'm looking forward to. What's that? I said it's what happens after the match that I'm looking forward to. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You suck. <laughs> hey, you're putting me in a car with gorgeous Gary Young, okay? If I make it I to am. Fort Worth from the airport, I will be impressed. Yes, and yes, and gorgeous Gary Young is a good friend of mine, and we share a birthday together. So just remember that, on, sir. I will. So if anybody sees me on the freeway between Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and <laughs> please pick me up, I got dumped out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yes. Well, Michael, who are you? Who I'll, I'll I'll pass this along the panel here, Michael and Joe, since you'll actually be here before we get Americos on the line. Who are you most excited to meet, Michael, on Sunday? Barbara Goodish, plain and simple. To stand okay. next to get the chance to stand next to the woman who was you know right there with Bruiser Brody, to me is the biggest honor I'm going to have in my time in this industry. And I have met some great names, but she's definitely the top of my list. Okay. She was uh, – I, I talked to her yesterday before I went on the air with Terry Sims for World Domination, his podcast. And, uh, you know, she asked me – we were going down a list of everybody, and, and you know, I, I never know who knows what. 
And right before we hung up, she goes, is Michael coming? And I said, yes, Michael and Joe will be there. She goes, oh, wonderful. So uh, she was really happy. And and I think we had told her you were coming, but, you know, she would probably forgotten because she's heard so many names are coming. She was very happy. She was happy to hear that. So, uh, Joe, what about you? Who are you looking forward to meeting the most on Sunday? My goodness. Um, You know, David, that is, and this is straight from the heart, this is the hardest question (laughs) to answer. And I can't answer it uh, because you you, you, you look at everybody there. You look at Barbara Goodish. You look at Stan Hansen. You look at Jim Cornette, Black Bart, everybody there. And I'm going to have a question for each of them pertaining to me growing up as a kid watching wrestling with Barbara Goodish. You know, uh, Frank wrestled for Roy Shires in the Cow Palace uh, the last two years of him running in the Battle Royals. Uh, Stan Hansen. I have a question, you know, did he ever consider ever coming out to San Francisco? Uh, Jim Cornette, Jim Cornette, very familiar with the situation up in the Pacific Northwest. He got to meet a dear friend of ours, Mike Rogers from Ring Run Northwest at a Smoky Mountain Fan Fest. And the first thing Jim told, um, asked Mike was, so tell me about this Bruce Anderson, about this Oregon Boxing Wrestling Commission thing. So, uh, I, I'm i looking forward to seeing everybody there. And also, and this is not a kiss-up or anything, David, I am especially uh, looking forward to finally meeting you. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Michael. I appreciate Oops. that, Joe. I meant, I, I meant you, David. I did. I did. I really oh, did. Yeah, I did. Me, yeah. <laughs> Barbara Goodish is a lot more important than I am, so you don't have to, you don't have to do that. So... Well, let me get. I, I do have a question for you, though, real quick. On your, I, I listened to your interview last night with Terry Sims. Good, good interview. I enjoyed that. Are you really five five and one hundred twenty pounds? Yes. Seriously, that's it. Yes. Damn. Wow, I'm ten inches taller and eight. I'm two hundred pounds more than you. Holy crap. <laughs> well, actually, about, I didn't realize you. Were, I didn't realize you were that little. Well, Mike, steady. Good things come in small packages. I'm sure his wife will tell me that. Well, that and get, that just means you're about 100 pounds dumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. So that's okay. That's Remember, all right. I come bearing gifts, man. I got something for you. So. Oh, okay. Well, if it's a bill, <laughs> if, it's your, if it's your bill for your flight, I don't want it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if, it's the, if it's the bill for the kosher meal on the uh, the flight, I don't want it. So no, I, I'm really looking forward to meeting both of y'all. I'm I'm uh, I'm humbled and stoked and excited and uh, I, I'm I'm you know I stress out so much over shows because I want everything to be perfect. I want everybody to have a good time, and this is the biggest one. So I'm trying to uh, you know um, like as soon as I finish here, I'm going to put up television tonight and I'm going to go lay down and just when I lay down, everything goes through my head and. <clears throat> You know everything rides uh, on Sunday. This is this is the big well, one. Dave, well, well, David, if, if I may, the, you know, right, you know, you just hit it on the head right there when you said, you know, I'm stressed because I want everything to be, you know, to work out right. That means you care. And with a lot of promoters in this business, and believe me, Mike will attest to this. I've crossed paths with many of you. <clears throat> All they care about is the good old American dollar and the heck with everybody else. And I've been put in really awkward situations. And hearing you say this, that, you know, you want to put out a good product and, you're re- and, you, re- and, you, and you sincerely care. And, and to me, that just speaks in droves. That's, that's very cool, my friend. Well, you know, Joe, I appreciate that. I, you know, I just, <clears throat> when you have a show like this, you know, we did such a good job in June, and we had such overwhelming feedback. You know, I, I've talked to so many people who are looking forward to it. When you got people driving from different states, when when people like you and Michael are leaving your families and spending money to come down here to be a part of this, it's my duty, it's my duty and the talent's duty to ensure 
that everybody leaves with memories. I want people talking about this for years. I want people to say, man, you remember because, you know what, when I went to the Moore Rogers Coliseum in 1989 and I saw Eric Embry and the late Percival Pringle, Percy Pringle, Paul Bear take on gorgeous Gary Young and Mick Foley in the scaffold match, and Mick Foley got thrown off the scaffold, I still talk about that. That's what I want people to do. I want people to leave this in their center on Sunday and go, man. In five years, I want them to say, man, remember that time we went to that show and we saw Jim Cornette knock out Matt Riviera with the tennis racket? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I probably should have said that. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I want people to remember that. I really want people to remember that. I think it's an all-star card. I think there's something on the show for everybody. If you're a fan of the old school come meet the legend. If you're a fan of today's product, come see Kyle O'Reilly. Because you know what? Kyle O'Reilly is regarded as the best wrestler in the entire world right now. Come see Charlie Haas. Come see the American Stocko, Lance Hoyt. Come see, it's they're all together, and it never happens. It's an all-star card, and it's just it's awesome. All right, we're going to try to get the DFW champion on the line right now, America's who knows what he's doing, where he is right now. Oh, so hard to get a hold of. Where's that man? Hello. Americos, you're on ICW Radio. What's up, man? Not much, man. How are you doing? Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you. Congratulations again, Americos, number 401 in the PWI 500, man. Congratulations. I really appreciate that, Mr. Fuller. It's uh, I'm humbled, to say the least, to be a part of the 500 this year. Man, that's crazy. You you come onto the scene a year ago, and uh, you start you know turning heads over in traditional championship wrestling, and then you start branching out. Nobody knows much about your backstory. You kind of kept that, and, you know, you kind of kept that in your in your in your suitcase. And, and that's cool. I, I, I can appreciate that. You know, there's a time and place for everything. And you kind of just look in everywhere you've gone, you have just come in like a superhero and just made people look over there real quick and go, oh, look at that. Everywhere you've gone, you've done that. So, uh, congratulations. I'm really proud of you. And the, the little time we've had to talk since you come to the WWE, I've really grown impressed with you. Uh, as a as a person and as a performer. Tonight on ICBTV, in a matter of at the top of the ten o'clock hour, we are going to broadcast the triple threat two out of three fall match we had with Gregory James and Ashley Jacobs. I was right there with you guys in the mix. Two fans who weren't there expect from this triple threat match because it was awesome. Oh yeah, to say the least, uh any any fans that that could not be there that have followed IHWE that that had heard that this match was going on they can expect basically everything that we hyped but more. I mean I went in expecting one of the best matches of my entire career so far, and I pretty much got that. I mean it was on par with anything that I've ever done, and I was insanely proud of that match, and I was proud of the main event that we were able to put on. I mean, uh, we we said we were going to make history, and I think the four of us absolutely did that night. Oh, definitely, and I was just proud to be associated with it. Uh, I kind of threw you a curveball, uh, but you know, <laughs> I think I think you're ready for it. I I announced you're going to defend the title against Charlie Haas this Sunday. Uh, I think this is probably uh, – I know you teamed up with Matt Hardy in Las Vegas uh, during the call for Alley Club, and that was a big deal. Uh, as a single competitor, I firmly believe this is your biggest challenge to date, not taking anything away from anybody you've stepped in the ring with. But Charlie Haas has competed on the grand stage. He's been in the ring with the Guerreros, with the Hogans, with the Lesners, with the Angles. He's been in the ring with the Cesaros, with the Chris Heroes. He's been in the ring with everybody. He's performed at WrestleMania. He's headlined pay-per-views. I mean, what's it like? I mean, what do you, what's going through your mind right now knowing that Charlie Haas is standing in front of you and he wants the DFW title on Sunday? Just complete and total focus. 
I mean, th this is all that I've been thinking about ever since uh, ever since I saw Charlie uh, at the last show. Um, I've been studying film. I've changed my diet up. I've intensified my workouts. I've studied what he does, and he's a very solid technical wrestler. So I've had to real. I need to. I need to look for openings. I need to look for openings, and that, that's all I can do because he's very technically gifted. And I need to really up my ground game because if he gets me down, I mean, there, there's a chance that anyone couldn't get back up. But that's where my weaknesses have been, and that's where I need to improve. So I know that I need to stay on my feet, stay quick, and stay man-to-man -man with Charlie because if he gets me down, that's not a place I need to be. But I'm fully 100% focused on retaining my title against Charlie Haas this Sunday. Well, I know you've been, uh, you know, I've heard through the grapevine, I've heard through your through your people, through your handlers, that you've been working with wrestling coaches. Charlie's an All-American from Seton Hall University. He was an All-American in wrestling. So I know you've been working with amateur wrestling coaches. I also know you've been uh, uh, really killing it at the CrossFit gyms. Uh, you, have, you have made a lot of changes. I've seen video of you training. Your handlers have sent me video because they wanted me to – be updated on it. Charlie was on here a few weeks ago, and Charlie really put you over. Charlie said, hey, you know what? America's is one of those great high flyer guys. I've been in the ring of Mysterio. I've been in the ring of Eddie Guerrero. Charlie said he was going to have to go back to the game plan he had when he was wrestling Rey Mysterio, when he was wrestling the late, great Eddie Guerrero. Charlie said he is going to have to watch out for you flying through the air. So it is going to be awesome. I do know Charlie has told me Charlie has said to me, this will be a fair match. I'm not coming in to cut any corners. He respects you. He said, either way, no matter what happens, he'll be ha he's going to shake your hand. No matter what happens. If he, Charlie said, if I get beat, I get beat. He said, he's not coming in here to lose, just like you. You're not coming in here to lose. But Charlie said, if he does, he'll shake your hand and show the world you were the better man, and I've had countless talks with Charlie Haas about this, and I'm really looking forward to the match Sunday. I think anybody, Doyle King, who was just on here, said he cannot wait to see that match. I know Jim Cornette, who mentored Charlie, but Jim Cornette has seen Americos. He also said he was like, that's going to be one for the books right there. So uh, the main event on Sunday – Americos and Charlie Haas for the DFW Championship. The DFW Championship has never been hotter than now. So, Americos, uh, where, how can people follow you on social media? I know, I know, you got to get back to focusing and training for Charlie Haas real quick. Go at your Twitter and your Facebook pages, and I'll let you get back to training. Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, I've got a big fan page, a big like page. Uh, just look up Americos. I'm on Facebook there. And then also on Twitter, uh, at Americos TCW, look me up. Um, but, yeah, uh, exactly what you said, the feeling is, is mutual. We're going to find out who the better man is this Sunday, and whoever that is is going to walk away with the brand-new DFW championship, and I can't wait. All right, Americos. Uh, stay healthy. I'll see you on Sunday. Thank you for your time, and uh, good luck on Sunday, champ. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. No problem. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was America's the DFW champion of IHWE. Sunday night, he steps inside the square circle with Charlie Haas. At the main event, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, you got to be there. The main event on Sunday at the Sendera Center is for the DFW championship. The card has been announced. The hype videos all over the place. If you want tickets, go to IHWENow.com. At the top of the hour, log on to YouTube and watch ICWE TV. Michael, Joe, Brian, I'm going to get off here and get ready to uh, put this television show up. But thank you guys for having me, and I will see at least two of y'all on Sunday in Fort Worth. Okay, guys? Looking forward to it. Actually, Sounds I'll see good you to on me, Saturday. Man. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Saturday. And don't All forget, right, man, we're traveling to come see the show, but Joe and I are also coming to work the show, too, so... You need something from us that morning, man, on Sunday to help set up. You let us know. That's what we're there for. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, you guys will be you guys will be in, in the mix, too. So. All right, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, take care. and uh, Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on Sunday. IHWE Old School Hustle. 
I'll see you at the matches. And on that note, we are coming to another end of a fascinating episode of IHWE Radio. Uh, I want to thank Eddie Allen for joining us in our first hour. Uh, thought it was Sonny Ono. Turned out to be the U.S. champion with UWA Wrestling, which will be going on on Monday night, did they say? Monday night, right? Yeah. So yeah, a little Monday, bit of a after Monday Night interview, Raw. But after Monday Night Raw. Good stuff. But you know Good what? Good stuff. You roll with the punches and you put on a show. That's how we do it here. Uh, just to let everybody know here, though, just for a second, been having a little conversation online with Morgan Dollar during the show here. And Morgan and Matt Riviera are already going at it on Facebook. So, Savior. I don't know. I'm almost kind of looking forward to see that. Maybe David needs to book that match, you know. Morgan in one corner versus Matt. I mean, they're already going at it. So, hey, who knows what's going to happen on Sunday in Fort Worth, in, in Fort Worth Texas, the Sendera Center at Old School Hustle. But we do know that tonight here on ICW Radio, we are going to, as we always do, let you know how you can find us on social media. You can find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Encyclopedia World Class. You can find me on Twitter at MichaelMC1972. And you can also look up all of us on the IHWE Radio Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com forward slash IHWE Radio. Joe, if somebody wants to be your friend, how do they find you? <laughs> uh, oh, well, I'm only on Facebook, people. And, okay, I will start it. And, uh, Brian, Austin, you'll have to go home with this. Okay, it's Austin J-O-E. is not with us now, but I'll finish it for him. Okay, okay go ahead, guys. J-O-E. S-O-U-S-A. S-A. There you go. And, Brian, how can everyone find you? You can find me on Facebook, Brian, B-R-I-N, Westcott, W-E-S-T-C-O-T-T, 33. And you can also find me on my own pro wrestling website, www.brianrich, B-R-I-A-N-R-A-C-H, one word, dot net, slash wrestle, dot H-T-M-L. And you can find out all sorts of great information on all your favorite wrestlers. And let's chorus uh, Austin Porsche, the phenomenal one, on Pipe Bomb Radio on Tuesday nights. And, of course, his Facebook page, and he's a great graphic designer. Yes, and on Pipe Bomb Radio, they will be welcoming uh, the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, this Tuesday night. So definitely going to be a yeah. great interview. Can't wait to hear that one. I would love to have Jimmy Valiant as a guest on this show somewhere down the road. I've had a chance to talk to him. So uh, at the CAC reunion, a great guy. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on another episode of IHWE Professional Wrestling Radio. We enjoy doing this show as much as you enjoy listening to it, maybe even just a little bit more. Uh, programming the Thank you, British lady. I hear a British lady in my ear in case you ever wonder why I say thank you, British lady. But programming note, live podcast this Sunday, September 28th from Old School Hustle, we will not be on our regular night next Wednesday. We will be back in our regular time slot October 8th with the original Mr. Wonderful Rock Riddle. So until then, tune in to YouTube.com, ICWE 2009, for tonight's episode of ICWE TV. Join us October 8th for, for Rock Riddle. Join Austin and Felix all the media on Tuesday night for Pipe Bomb Radio with Jimmy Valiant. And enjoy the week. Thank you for joining us. And we'll talk to you again soon. Good night, everybody. Good night.